Hi, Libra, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your beginning to mid-May 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. This meditation and cleanse will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds, letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. The imagery that's coming up here, Libra, is, is very, very interesting. It's very beautiful. It's, it's one of those silhouettes like on a Vogue, a Vogue magazine, but vintage. So I don't know if somebody's flipping through a magazine or the big hat is really standing out. So I don't know if somebody is wearing a big hat while they're listening to this, but there's a sense of style. There's a sense of, of fashion being important, but it's like how I present myself is is key to me. And it doesn't mean that we have to be high fashion or we have to be, you know, fashion at all. It can be, you know, galoshes and, and, and work pants that are where we feel the most comfortable. But what Spirit is saying right now is own it, own it, own it. Own the way that we are moving forward and presenting ourselves. So... The movie with Audrey Hepburn in it of Funny Face is coming forward, and especially that scene, Think Pink. Um, if you don't know it, Google it. It's it's just very pretty. It's a very pretty scene, but it's there's something here where we stand out. But even if you know, yeah, just, just just stand out. Be you. Even if you're setting trends, stay to who you are. Okay. So let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides. So this is a six of cups. Okay, going back to the imagery that's coming forward, this can also be somebody who works in fashion, fashion designer, model, something to do with the fashion world or fashion student, you know, coming forward. Okay, that just needed to be acknowledged. Now we can move forward. Brilliant. So we have the six of cups. We need to be very mindful of letting the past rule our present and also living too much in nostalgia or worry or you know I'm just hearing they're going they're going to grow up or they've grown up and there's a sorrow around that so it's it's knowing that the past does not necessarily get to define our present and we get to to live beautifully and out loud and and brilliantly so there's going to be a really strong pull during this time Libra to be in the past to to be held back and spirit is saying here no don't do it. I mean, remembering the past is one thing, but letting it rule our lives, that is quite another. Our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading Ooh. and show me clearly right here. We have the root chakra and the third eye chakra. We have balance and we have dreams. We're going to be finding balance to our body, to ourselves within our dreams or what we've been dreaming about. Some Okay, because this is a general reading, again, remember, not everything will resonate. But there is somebody here, and it's coming through very, very strongly. You have waking dreams. You'll have daydreams. You'll get lost in these in these other worlds. And Spirit is saying here, that's your destiny calling you forward. Why are you ignoring it? So there's somebody here, and you're letting words of other people, like they could make fun of it. They could say, oh, why would you dream that? Why would you want that? Why would you let them decide how you get to move forward in your life? So we're going to be finding balance from our dreams, but also from the way that we connect with spirit, from the way that we connect with our spirit guides, how the door is being opened. There's a real sense of I'm finding harmony within myself and I'm claiming who I need to be. So let's look at our tarot energy. It begins with angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. 
guide this reading and show me clearly Ooh, right here start off with these two the six of swords and the nine of cups okay it has not been an easy journey i just keep on seeing the the waters lapping up they're coming through very strongly i don't know if somebody's by the sea it could be raining out the window right now but there is a sense of even outside it is showing you that emotions are are riled up that emotions are intense so this is going to need to be an acknowledgement and it's going to need to be an acknowledgement that i'm taking my knowledge i'm taking what i need i'm moving forward but there's a part of me that's really doubting every single you know or stroke every single step that i'm taking or, or way that i'm moving and it's because emotionally we're really invested in the way that we're moving forward it's not like oh it doesn't matter it matters tremendously there are also some of us here libra who in order to keep things balanced, because remember, we're all about balance, we're, we're represented by the scales in the zodiac imagery, right? And in the stars, we're also represented about justice, with justice in the major arcana. There is such a need here to keep things balanced, to keep things balanced. And there is a sense of, I can't keep it balanced at the risk of losing who I am and what I need. So there is, there's a way of moving forward, there's an insurity, there are also people around us who will move forward with us, who love us, who connect with us. But there can be a journey that we may very well have to take on our own and say, okay, well, how will this move forward? Where will this bring me? What will this get me? We did. We then have the, the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups is a wish coming true. There is something here where, you know, some people are going to think you're arrogant and that just needs to be said and don't shoot the messenger. I don't mean it to be rude at all. Spirit is just saying some people will see you as being more arrogant or more, you know, kind of grandiose than you yourself see yourself or you yourself are, are meaning to be. You're not meaning to go into the room and have eyes turned towards you. And yet that's what I see, see coming. Beware of people taking you by eyes. Beware of people looking at you and immediately thinking you're not that great. I'm going to knock you off your pedestal. So there, there's going to be some animosity coming forward. And because we are a bit unsure about the way that we are moving forward, what we are moving forward to, there is a sense here of, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I don't know if it's worth it, but spirit is saying it is worth following you. So there's, there's, there's this energy here where I can follow everybody else or I can follow me. And at this time, we are going to need to follow ourselves, to sit back, to know that a wish is being granted, to know that beauty is coming into our lives, to know that there is that powerful, powerful, powerful connection. And it will move with us. It moves us then to angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels. Oh, goodness. And spirit guides. Okay, they're saying two more. We have the tower. We have the five of wands. Angels and spirit guides. One the fool angels and spirit guides and two more come okay so we have virgo energy we have the queen of swords that represents us if we are born on the cusp with virgo that is going to come in meaning that not only do we want everything to be balanced but we want the details to be right some of us libra are going to be very caught up in the details be mindful about that because you're going to lose the whole picture it's like absolute perfectionist moment coming forward you're going to lose the whole picture and say but it has to be perfect it has to be perfect and it's not going to be what you want it to be it's not spirit is saying what is in your head is the idea of perfection what is created is as best as human beings can do so let us do our best and spirit is saying forget the rest and i know that's such a corny statement or such an easy thing to say and as a perfectionist myself such a hard thing to do to be able to say okay i can get it this far or i can i can do this and i can be happy with it i can start and i can move it forward or i can never start because it'll never be what i dream so that's going to be something that we're going to be fighting against here again we're going to be very hypercritical about the details about the finer things that's going to be something that we need to acknowledge and we can't let it cripple us because for some of us, it's just going to become a bit paralyzing. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to a bit of depression or sorrow or just anxiety coming forward. So be aware of this. We start off with the tower. The foundation has been broken. There is a way that we're moving forward or there is something that we're moving forward to. And it's like, oh, I didn't realize that I needed this. I didn't realize that the foundation needed to be shaken or that that it had fallen apart that way. So what spirit is really saying here is look at what you need, look at who you are and understand that certain things have fallen apart and we just haven't been, we haven't been ready 
to see what an impact they have had on our lives. Even if we already acknowledge it, we aren't acknowledging it as fully as we need to. It doesn't mean, and Spirit's being very powerful here in saying, don't live in it again. Don't wrap it around you like a cloak and, you know, kind of like a cocoon and zip yourself in. Look at the pain, acknowledge what you've been through, acknowledge how strong you are and keep moving forward and keep going. Because this is something that will help balance the scales, that will help see the strength and the harmony and the brilliance within you, but also help understand there's like, there's a certain chord that has been out of tune. I just keep on hearing this chord that's not in tune with the instrument and a harp, a heart. Okay. So it's a, a harp and spirit keeps saying a harp, a heart, a harp, a heart. And it's like, it's not in tune with your heart. There is something here where it doesn't feel like, right. You're trying to, to make it, you're trying to say it. It doesn't feel right. It needs to be acknowledged. There is also something here that has been shaken up. Everything has been shaken up more intensely than you had realized it had affected you. So there can be something in your life where you thought, oh, that's not a big deal, but you find yourself thinking about it and it needs to be acknowledged or else it just kind of haunts you. It haunts you. It haunts you like a shadow. It's, it's a part of you. And again, it needs to be seen because it brings this energy and you'll see it, this energy of a fighting of chaos, of, of hurt, of pain that keeps on coming forward and it'll play itself out. I just see different masks, different roles, different masks, different roles. So you'll see it from different people in different roles in your life, in different ways that they move forward in your existence, in your life. And it's teaching you something, but it's not seen yet. So this is going to be a time actually where you're going to kind of break down that wall, that barrier, and you're going to start seeing what, again, has, has been out of reach, hasn't been, you know, really where you wanted to be. And it causes chaos. It causes fighting. You might say, I don't understand why they're always fighting. It needs, there's just something here that they're trying to teach you. Okay. And, and it needs to be seen. I'm just seeing tomcats. It's just like they fight because they need to fight. And there's also going to be, okay, this is for another person. There's going to be some people in your life. They love drama. They love fighting. Don't be dragged into it. You've, you've just seen that that's how they are. Even in the most pe peaceful of moments, they will make trauma drama. It needs to be seen and you need to step back because the fool is saying, I'm starting a new road. I'm starting a new journey. I'm starting a new way that I need to move forward for me and stop. Like absolutely stops right there. The fool is coming and we're saying, okay, let me be foolish. Let me be brave. Because what spirit is saying here is that we're really worried about what everybody else thinks of us. It can almost cripple us. There's something here. Again, it's an anxiety coming forward. And there's, there's just a sense of, I need to stay calm and I need to look that and know that no matter what road I choose, no matter which way I move forward, somebody isn't going to approve. Somebody isn't going to like me. Somebody isn't going to understand. And I just see here, this is a time for something new. This is a time to say, I've always wanted to, and then do it and then see what happens. Take perfection out of the equation and let it be rough. Let it be weird. Let it be different. And let yourself walk that way. Because remember, every single hero's journey begins with them first and foremost being a fool. And people laughing and pointing and not understanding. So let people see you as that fool. Don't let you define you as that fool. Because there's a new... there's There are wings behind you. I just see you jumping and not realizing that the wings will catch you. I mean, you will fall. You will fail. You will you will scrape your knees and, and bloody your hands. Yes. But you will learn to fly. And that is extraordinary. You know, unlike Icarus, you will not go too close to the sun. And it brings us then to the Queen of Swords. There's knowledge here. There's something that we've been working towards. There's also strength and power within our voice. We're finding it. And it comes through an elimination of pain and hurt and disappointment. It comes through an acknowledgement of that pain and hurt and disappointment, but also saying, no, you don't get to define me. You don't get to be me anymore. There is a real sense here that we're embracing the sacred feminine, meaning that we are embracing the caring, beautiful elements of our life and of ourselves. We're also breaking, embracing the fierceness, the storms, the tempestuousness of who we are. And we're seeing it grow into something bigger. We, we know that we've trained for this. Like we have learned how to use that sword. We have learned how to use that power. Now is the time that we start to focus on it. There is somebody that comes forward. And again, 
I see you having a history with this person. I don't know if it's a past life history or if this person has been in your life before. They start off kibitzing. They'll start off with something that's a joke, like, you know, oh, don't worry about this. Or, you know, of course, you always have to be, you know, the center of attention or it always has to be about you. It's going to have an underlying ring to it of menace. Not menace isn't the right word. Malice is the right word and resentment. Just know that. Know that during this time because this person can cause trouble for us in ways that we just don't need. It's like, what the heck are you doing? Like, where is this coming from and why are you doing this? It brings us to the hermit. This is also going to be a person who... I just see this person talking out of both sides of their mouths. One way... And one side of their mouth, they want to be the center of attention. The other side of their mouth, they want to be hidden. They want to, you know, be alone. They want to discover and understand and just live this quiet, simple existence. And they are just contradicting themselves all the time. They are not in peace with them. They're going to try and drag you out of balance. Why? Because they've been able to do it before. They kind of think it's easy. They kind of think it's fun. And they, they know that the foundation isn't as sturdy as you want it to be, as you need it to be. It moves us then to angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. The devil, Capricorn energy. The ten of swords. Again, the water coming forward. And again, the fool. You now have the fool repeating himself. There is a need here, again, to take that risk, to jump out. It's like to jump out of the plane, to do something absurd, to embrace the absurd. Absurdity keeps on coming forward. I don't know if it's a form of writing, if it's a form of artwork, if it's, you know, just, you know, somebody sitting there and saying, this is absolutely absurd. I can't believe we're doing this. And then you know that that's a moment that you're, you're supposed to be embracing, you're supposed to be in. With the devil, there is an energy coming forward to tempt you. And there is something here that's saying, but don't you want this? It's kind of like, this is what everybody else wants. This is what everybody else has. Why are you turning away from it? What if you're really messing up? What if you're walking away from something that was truly beautiful or was truly brilliant or was supposed to be? So the devil's coming forward and it's making you doubt every single step. And spirit is saying, be very mindful because this is an energy that makes you doubt everything. It just makes you doubt everything. This is a person who will build you up in one moment and knock you down the next and build you up and knock you down and then say, why can't you make a decision, Libra? You know, why don't you know what you're talking about? Like, why aren't you better prepared for X, Y, Z? So being aware of this, because it is highly manipulative. It is highly aggressive. And yet you're not always going to see it. And people might say to you, well, they're not being that way. Like they're not being angry. They're not being rude. They're not being, you know, chaotic within your life. You're making something out of nothing. And spirit is saying here, don't swallow your words. Don't swallow your voice. So even if it might be blown out of proportion. For you, it's the, f the straw that broke the camel's back and a change needs to come forward from it. You're also seeing yourself breaking free of chains, hurts, disappointments. They've wrapped themselves around you. They've made it like almost like you're a mummy, right? You, you can't walk forward. You can't do it. And so spirit is saying here, as you break these chains, you break into yourself. You, you see how you need to move because there's something here that's just stopping you moving, stopping you embracing, stopping you seeing. The Ten of Swords is the darkness before the dawn. And with the darkness before the dawn, there is that nihilism. There is that sense of fatality. There is that sense of it's never going to be. I just, I just can't do it. And what Spirit is saying with this is, are you going to drown? You know, are you going to take all the knowledge, all the insight, all the understanding that you have learned and let it destroy you? Or are you going to rise with it now as your weapons, as your your armor, as your, your battle gear and move forward with it? Now understanding more, now embracing a new chapter because this comes with a new chapter of thought. This is, is the trial before the rebirth. And Spirit is saying here, are you going to accept it? Are you going to see it? Or are you going to hide away? Because it's perfectly fine if we're not ready for it. You know, people always think, oh no, I have to face it now. I have to face it now. Challenge accepted. Sometimes it's not right. And so we have to be honest with ourselves and say, if it's not right, if I need to walk away, if I need to step back, that's what I need to do. Because the fool is saying, it is time to take the road that's right for us. It is time to move forward in a way that, again, other people might not under understand. We might not fully understand. And as we move forward for us, with us, people see us as that fool. But we also have to take the risk to be seen as fools, to not be understood, to have people mock us, to have people doubt us, to have people say, I can't believe you're doing this. That is so stupid. That is so, you know, foolhardy. 
as long as we're not putting ourselves in danger or anybody else, you know, as long as we're being responsible, but also being connected to us, let it be the game changing time. Let it be the powerful time. Now, let's see. Let's go deeper. There is somebody that's coming forward. I'm just seeing them say, take my hand, take my hand, take my hand. I'm also seeing Dumbo's, I, I, oh, I don't like that movie. It always makes me cry terribly. Um, Dumbo's feather coming. It's like, it's almost, it's almost like you believe you need something that you don't, which is the whole metaphor, right? Of that, of that scene. There's something that you believe you need that if you fully trusted yourself, you wouldn't need. So be aware of that. Be aware. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels. Ooh, goodness. Okay. So we have the hangman, the page of fire, and the messenger of water. So the hangman is telling us that as we're moving forward, as we're taking in our blessings, we're seeing things differently. We just are. The way that we had defined it before, the way that it had been for us, it's not there. It's not there. And we're going to think, oh my gosh, I'm wrong. Because I just see like a rabbit scared, frozen. And deciding, you know, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move, to do anything. I'm just going to freeze and wait till this passes. Spirit is saying there will always be a freezing moment. There will always be a freezing moment. Look at things differently. Look at things differently. The way that you're seeing it, though different, not wrong. Not wrong at all. It brings us then to the page of fire. There is somebody here. Now, this could be the energy that you need to be mindful of. Okay, but I see that more linked to a earth sign energy, you know, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. It's mainly coming out as Capricorn or Virgo, but there's also this, this young fire energy. This person is very immature. I actually don't see this person necessarily as young. This person is immature and yet thinks everybody should listen to them. They're very bossy. They're very determined. They're very focused. They don't have the skill that is needed. They also love drama because they will create the drama and then be like this wise leader who goes in and fixes it because they know what's happening. They kind of set everything up. That's who they are. Be mindful of this person. Be mindful of the games that they play. They're not as sophisticated as they think they are. Okay. And that's going to make it better for you because now that you're aware, you will actually be able to see them. It brings us then to the messenger of water. This is a message coming to our heart. It is from a situation, a person, a, a place, an idea, we would not have looked. So we would not have looked. So be aware of this, that there is an energy around us that is going to kind of, it's, it's just going to turn our heads. It's going to turn our heads and say, look here, see this, listen to me. Or there's something where it's just like things calm down and we hear this lyric of a song or things calm down and we start to kind of go back to things that had inspired us before. And now that's going to be a game changer for us. I don't see this necessarily as a person at all. I really do see this as something that's coming forward. It can come from a person right, who, who deeply loves us, who cares for us, or who just has a beautiful heart, a beautiful connection. But there is an energy here of like, this is going to be inspiring. This is going to be a game changer. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of, it's the world. The world is opening and we're going to think, oh, I have to move forward in it this way, or this is what's expected of me, or this is what everybody wants of me. The world is saying to us, where do you want to stand? And if you don't want to be out in the middle of the world, if you want to be and have a more quiet life, be a more quiet person, why does everybody put that down? There's, there's beauty to that. The world is opening. Do not be pushed in a direction you don't want to go in. It moves us then to life purpose, the third chakra. There is power to our words that is coming during this time. We're going to start to speak our purpose. We're going to start by whispering it. We're going to start by feeling really unsure about it. And then there's going to be a confidence that comes with us that says, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I need to move forward this way. It brings us then to the hermit once again. So we have now the hermit repeating itself. And the hermit says, turn inward, turn inward. Look at what is illuminating you because there's something about our dreams. There's something about, you know, we've kind of locked it away, put it away on a shelf, said, I can't do this. There's something here that we thought we couldn't do that is coming forward. And it's like, oh, maybe I can, maybe I can, maybe I start small. Maybe it doesn't have to be this perfect big thing. Maybe it can be a very small, quiet thing. It brings us then to the Ace of Swords. We are taking this gift, even though it's coming subconsciously, we have the Queen of Swords from the same deck. So when we have the ace of, of any deck, you know, of, no, of any suit from that deck, and we have the court card, that means that we are taking this gift. 
And it is a gift that's made just for us because we are represented by the swords in the minor arcana by justice in the major arcana. There is a power and a beauty and a brilliance to our voice that leads us forward. There is an insight and an idea that we are going to see coming forward. There is also a sense of the power of our voice is changing. It can be that we're looking at voice lessons and, you know, kind of saying, how can I have it so that my voice doesn't get so tired so that I'm not always hurting myself, you know, type of thing. Or how do I have it so that I can hold these notes longer or whatever. Whatever it is that we're looking, we're looking to rectify a problem. There comes a gift of knowledge with rectifying that problem. It's almost like spirit was saying, I was waiting for you to ask. I was waiting for you to ask. It brings us then to the five of pentacles. There is an energy around us and it's a poverty mentality. It is you have to be out in the cold. You cannot be who you want to be, how you want to be. There's always going to be a struggle. There's always going to be a pain. There's always going to be a fear of not having enough. Now, this is, of course, very common, especially if we've lived through a trauma and we think, oh, well, that trauma is going to come again. I can't let down my guard. I let down my guard before and it came back. And it, it blindsided me. I trusted when I shouldn't. I, you know, did this when I shouldn't. I thought I was safe when I wasn't. So if that is something that we have lived through, know that the fear is coming forward and we have to acknowledge it. We have to acknowledge that fear with a therapist, a, a spiritual advisor, a, you know, a friend, a journal. We have to acknowledge that fear in order just to kind of pin it down. Even if we start acknowledging one fear and then as we go deeper, you know, as we journal deeper, as we talk more, we realize, oh, no, that's not the fear at all. It's, it's deeper. It's more than what I thought it was going to be. With the five of pentacles, it is what keeps us barred from the place of security and prosperity. And what makes us think also that we're not even worthy to ask, ask for help, ask for blessings, ask for assistance, ask for, ask for anything. It's almost like, no, I have to do this all on my own. And spirit is saying here, no, you don't. And they really want you to know this. This is not just a journey for you to bear it all on your shoulders. It brings us then to the call. Yeah. And that's, that's what spirit is doing to you. Spirit is calling to you in the most beautiful, personal, powerful way and saying, it's time to rise. It's time to spread those wings. It's time to embrace what you need and not hide in the shadows and not say, no, I can't. You're rising out of darkness. You're rising out of fear, but you're also rising into yourself. And this can be a very small step. You know, spirit is saying, make sure you understand. It doesn't have to be that all of a sudden I'm changing my whole entire life and absolutely, you know, on the perfect path of whatever. It's happening very slowly. It's happening with a mindset. It's happening with a way that we look at things, a way that we see things, a way that we're saying things to ourselves. And then all of a sudden the door opens and it's like, it's time. It is absolutely time. And we start to peek through first. And then it's like, yeah, no, this is what I want. So there's a hesitance here, but there's a hesitance towards towards a beautiful finding. All right. All right, Virgo. All right, Virgo. All right, Libra. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and tenacity that we hold. I love each and every one of you. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. And that ending, did you hear that? It was all out of order, but it was all there. And that's what Spirit is saying this time. It's going to be all out of order, order, all out of the normal way that we do it, but it's all there. So hold on to that. You know, it's just going to be different, but it's still going to be, it's still going to be gorgeous. All right. All right, Libra. Let's take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Libra, and may blessings always be with you.